Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to my channel! Today, we had a Pokemon Nintendo Direct, and I am going to make my trainer and draw myself with my starter! So, um, this actually isn't how I was planning to start out my channel. I was gonna post a different video next week, but then the Pokemon Direct happened and everything changed. So, now I have to learn how to draw Scorbunny, um, because he's a cutie and he's gonna be my starter. And, uh, yeah, so, here we go. Oh, wow, this is a really bad score, Bunny. Okay, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this with the power of patience. Okay, so I think my problem is that I don't understand where his eyes fall yet. So let's, okay, so his face is kind of more like a like an egg than a circle. So let's let's draw an egg and see what happens. Okay, so the second attempt is coming out better already. So, so first we're going to be uh, trying to learn how to draw these guys. Um, Cause my Pokemon trainer, obviously I know how to draw her, but I want to draw her in an outfit that is similar to, inspired by, the one in this game, which is so cute. I love the layered look. I would wear that outfit like anytime. Then again, my wife tells me I dress like a Pokemon trainer. So I think I would probably just wear most Pokemon trainer outfits anytime. <laughs> um, so that's just my history talking. So yeah, the reason I'm picking Scorbunny is because he reminds me of a character from my favorite JRPG that isn't Pokemon, Persona 3, um, Akihiko. He's got a little permanent band-aid and he has a red and white color scheme and he's energetic and I think Akihiko also canonically likes bunnies. And now, even if he turns into a big uh, Bara cat, well, not a cat, but bunny, I will not be traumatized like I was with Incineroar because Akihiko is a boxer. Okay, so that's not the worst score bunny. Um, I think I kind of understand how he works now. So let's, let's thumbnail out a pose. I, th I think I can get the design as I'm going through the actual drawing over here. So pose, I'm gonna, I wanna hold score bunny in this picture. So I think we have a good basis to work off of. Let's get into making the actual piece. So I'm gonna try to stay pretty loose with my lines first. And I kind of, I wanna do a full body cause I really like the boots, but I don't really have room for a whole body on this page. Like if I wanna get any details in. So I'll probably just end up with a half body here. That's okay. I can draw the combat boots anytime I want. And also, if they have changeable outfits in this game, like they have had the first, the last few generations, which I really hope they do because I love dressing up in games. Um, if they have outfits that I can change, it's gonna end up changing anyway. Even though I love the combat boots, I'm gonna end up buying every outfit that the game has because that is who I am as a person. Give him some nice, big cheeks. Yes, big, round boy. give a little bob. I know the trainer in the picture has her hair behind her ear on this side. I part on the other side, so um, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. 
let's get to work on this outfit. So I don't want to do exactly the outfit in the picture. I want to kind of get a little creative with it. Um, let's give me some legs. I realize this is like super far over to the left and I kind of want something over here, but I mean, when I scan it, I can crop it, so it's fine. We'll just stick with that. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. I say, I feel like I say that a lot. So I really like the, like I said, I really like the look that they have in this trailer for it, um, but I always like to modify a little bit and I think the first modification I want to make is make that sweater into like a sweater vest instead of a full sweater because while I like how those sleeves look on the model, I don't wear those kinds of sleeves in real life. I don't like them, so I'm gonna give like little cap sweater sleeves. Beautiful. Okay. And then since I have shorter sleeves, maybe the dress underneath I can make a like mid-length sleeve that's like rolled up. Cause it's got like a little collar, so maybe it's got little cuffs. At least my version does. Oh, forgot the little buttons. So, and I know like this is like a warmer looking outfit and like maybe it's supposed to be warmer, but she's also wearing a mini skirt, so like, don't at me. I want, if I want short sleeves, I can have short sleeves. And uh, maybe I'll have a watch. All right, I think we've got a nice uh, sketch going here. So just uh, add a little detail and then we can start putting some line art on this. So I don't always actually do line art. Um, a lot of the time I will just lightly erase my art and then start coloring on top of the pencil sketch. Um, and then I will add lines in with like darker colored pencil tones and basically I end up with kind of a lineless look. Let me see if I can find an example back here somewhere. Yeah, this is kind of more my default, but this is a more illustrative style than I want to go for with this because I want it to look kind of cartoony in Pokemon. This is more my like Fire Emblem, high fantasy style. And this is my D&D character in case you're curious. Um, but so I'm going to put lines on her, which I don't always do. So let's pull out some of my fine liners. I have quite a few. Um, so for this one, I think we'll use these three. So this is actually an AC Moore brand one, um, and it is a pigment liner. It's 0 .05, it's my smallest black liner. Um, I used to use Sakura liners, um, but I don't anymore because I don't like them. Um, I think they bleed too easily, and also I tend to go, th like, ruin the tips really fast. Um, this one, actually, the tip is starting to bend on me, which is not ideal, but I'm, you know, trying it out. So yeah, AC Moore has a brand premiere by Nicole that they just expanded. They have alcohol markers, which are okay. The nibs fray over time, but they generally, by the time I lose a nib on those, I've also run out of ink in the marker. Uh, so I don't really care. Um, I'll also be using a Copic multiliner that I got in a doodle pack. This is a 0.3. I do like Cop Copic multiliners. I usually use the sepia tone ones. Um, because I can kind of hide those with the coloring layers, but uh, I'm gonna use black lines for this because it's Pokemon and Pokemon sometimes has black liner in like the anime and stuff. And then I'm gonna use this brush liner by Tombow, um, which you can get really thin lines with if you want, like really thick or really thin. It depends on how light you press, pressure, all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, we're gonna use these three, but we're gonna start with the finest one. So let's get going on that.
Okay, so that's one layer of line art down. Let's go to layer two. Slightly thicker lines. Alright, I think that's not bad. Let's get started on our last one, which is going to be the big outside chunky line. I think that's good. I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then we'll come back and color it. Okay, so time to color this bad boy if my camera will stop quivering. So I'm going to color this using the Ohuhu marker set. Um, I have other markers. I have a lot of Copics. I have, uh, I think I have 500 or more markers at this point. Not Copics specifically, but alcohol-based markers. I have a problem, but I've been wanting to use my Ohuhus more. Um, they're a good, cheap art supply, and I thought that they're kind of appropriate for Pokemon because it's a kid's game and they're really bright and colorful. And one of the reasons that I wanted to use this set is because I have a wide range of gray tones. Most of my gray tones are in my Ohuhu markers, so um, they come with a- I have the 100 set, comes with a really nice selection. Um, a lot of the colors are very saturated. There's not a lot of subtle shades. Um, like, they're not perfect, but I do enjoy them. Especially when I'm going for like a more simple cell shaded style and I'm not worried about blending a ton of really soft edges. And uh, something that I wanted to point out while I am here, um, I'm using a warm gray one for him and also I'm going to use it for the sweater, um, but I'm going to go in and put in my shading first. Um, I am a bit weird, I have noticed, when it comes to using alcohol-based markers that in that I work from dark to light, not the other way around. I don't know why in particular I do it, I just I find it a little easier to blend this way. So yeah, I put my shadows in and then I start going over with the lighter colors. Um, and you don't have to do it that way. I just think it's worth noting that um, I am not typical. And so if you see me doing that and you're like, what? Um, it's not you, it's me. I am the weird one. Yeah, the gray tones in this set blend fantastically, just in case you were wondering. The only unfortunate thing is there's not a ton of mid-tones in the grays, like they go from really light to really dark, so you can either um, get those from another set or you can, life hack, get a colorless blender from another brand because oh, who doesn't make one? The Prismacolor one is the one that I use right now. Um, it comes with uh, the colored pencil kits. Like they have a little pencil extender and it comes with a pencil sharpener, I believe, some erasers, and also this guy. It's about $20. You can get it at AC Moore or Michaels or Hobby Lobby for 40% off most of the time. Um, it's a decent deal and it's an easy way to get a nice colorless blender. Um, so I'm actually gonna put some, there's this ribbing on here and I wanna use the blender to draw it. Cause what a blender does is it picks up color and removes it, so it leaves it lighter than it was before. Um, so it could be used to a lot of cool effects. It's not meant to be used like you put one color down and then another and then you just kind of rub it between them. Um, I mean, you can do that, but that's not really how you're supposed to use it. I mean, I guess you can use art supplies however you want. So another thing you can do with a colorless blender is you can take a darker marker and this is actually how chameleon tip markers work and you can put it on the tip of your blender, pick up a little bit of that color and then it'll give you a lighter version of the same color and it will blend more easily. You can also, it will also lighten up the end of it 
So like, it's a, it's a good little technique. It's a good little trick. I'm just gonna color over this. Forget it. Forget about it. And that's how you clean your colorless blender, is you just color with it until the color's out, and then you're good. I think the closest pink color that I have to the actual dress that they are wearing is like the these 14 through 16 range. Um, not the 15, that's a little too dark. But I don't know. Okay, we're gonna try the 16. I'm trying to figure out what I wanna shade with. So I generally don't shade with uh, the same cult, the same tones, what I do, and I'll explain what that means in a second here. All right, so let's talk a little color theory. Um, and by color theory, I mean I'm going to talk out my butt because I don't know anything about color theory. But um, I like to shade with cool tones instead of the darker tones of the same color. I think it gives a better look to the overall piece. So I will be shading this with this. Um, I actually did a little practice swatch down here, I don't think you guys can see that too well, um, to make sure that they blend well, and they do, so I will show you over here how that works out. So part of the trick with this method is that you want to make sure that your ink is still wet when you are doing things. So you want to work fairly quickly with this method. A little redder than I wanted, but eh, best laid plans. I guess it's just red now. And you might have noticed while I was working just now that I went out of the lines here. Let me show you another way to use a colorless blender. So I'm going to use my bullet side um, and just go over it and it's going to lighten this tone a little bit. And you can actually usually get it all the way out of the paper. If you can't, what I like to do is go over with the blender and lighten it up. And then I will go over it with a gel pen or white out when it is dry. But it seems like that came all the way out. Let's try to make this a little pinker. Um, I'm going to mix in number 17 here and see what that does to this color. Maybe if I try a darker pink? We're just gonna be way off the color here and that's okay. I've made peace with it. So let's just get this going. Well, that looks redder somehow. Hmm. Well, okay, I guess I'm just wearing red now. I mean, it's fine. I like red too. Pink's my favorite color, but if I have to wear red, I'll wear red. Good enough. Okay, let's move on. Um, I'm gonna move on to the hat now, and I've picked out number 50, and I'm gonna shade it with 83 again. Um, green and purple are opposite colors on the color spectrum. See, I said I wasn't gonna talk about color theory, but I tricked you. Here's color theory. They're opposites, so you, um, when you layer them, you get a neat look. Now the color theory is gone because I forget what that actually means, but I like to shade with opposite colors. Um, so I think I'm actually going to do the hair next and I'm going to keep this green in hand and I'm going to use that for the shading. So I think I'm going to use 95 as my hair color. I actually do have a blonde streak in my hair. I think I'm gonna add that with a colored pencil towards the end. So I'm gonna put these away because we are done with them. Oh, and I wanna just have black leggings, so I'm just gonna pick out one of my darker grays. Let's just go back to this warm gray. And just 
fill these in. I know that the character doesn't have leggings, but I always wear leggings when I have a skirt on, so she has leggings. Cool, okay, let's work a little on this guy. Let's start with the yellows, and I'm gonna shade those with, um, I think this cool gray. Maybe I should be going with a warm gray because this whole palette's really warm, but it doesn't really show up as the thing underneath the yellow, I don't think. I don't think it's dark enough. So, <clears throat> this should warm up the tone since it is yellow. Oh, I want my lights first. That's okay, again, happy accidents, they happen. My light source is just getting crazy up here. Okay, so all that's left is my skin which I'll be using these three for. I'm gonna use 77 to put down a base cool tone layer, then go over with 25 and then 26. Add some pink. Will you make this pink? No, nothing will make that pink now. Except I have an idea. Let's see. I wonder if this shade will show up. It will. So I'm going to take this as a Prismacolor Color Ace pencil. And I usually just use these for sketches and doodles. But they also layer nicely over markers. So I'm going to try to get this to be pink. Yeah, now that's the pink I'm talking about not exactly the shade I was going for initially, but it's like way closer than it is right now. Just so you know, by the way, you don't need like super crazy art supplies to do this. I think this would probably work as well with a Crayola colored pencil if you just went over it. Um, I haven't tried it, but I do have some, so maybe I'll try it in a future video. And also, I don't like how the shading on my hat came out, so I'm going to go over that with my indigo colored pencil, and then go over with a green. Cool. So I think that is more or less right. Oh, right. I wanted to do a blonde streak in my hair. Let's grab a yellow colored pencil. I love layering colored pencils with um, markers. I think it looks really nice. And then got some out of the lines. All right. So that's that. Maybe I'll just put a little uh, little background on it. And by a background, I mean a square. Okay, and then the last step is let's go and put some highlights. All right, so that's that. And uh, I guess we'll just sign this baby stop hitting my camera. And uh, yeah, so what do you think? I think that came out pretty cute. Let me know in the comments which version you're getting, sword or shield, and if you know which starter you're getting yet, I want to hear everything you have to say. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!